I recently got the rare chance to visit a private quarry in Arkansas that exposes some fantastic geologic eye candy. Just look at the folding in this bedrock. And this fresh road cut is part of a miles-long highway project completed in 2023 that's given geologists new insights into Arkansas geologic history. I got to explore these sites with knowledgeable experts as part of the 2025 South Central Section meeting of the Geological Society of America. And today on Ozark Outsider, I'm going to share some of what I saw and learned with you. Because even though these outcrops lie beyond the Ozarks, they're still part of our regional geologic history. And they're just freaking cool! Just south of Arkansas Ozarks, the geology and landscape changed dramatically. Today's Washita Mountains expose bedrock that was crumpled into a series of complex folds by a tectonic collision in the late Mississippian to Pennsylvanian time frame. This mountain building event influenced the development of the Ozarks as well, though that's a story for another day. The results of intense folding and faulting of these rocks is easy to see in LIDAR, but it's a lot harder to experience on the ground, where all those darn trees keep getting in the way. Here's where road cuts come in, demonstrating how blowing stuff up can be good for science. In September 2023, an extension of Arkansas Highway 5 was opened, with the goal of reducing traffic along the narrow corridor of Highway 7 through Hot Springs National Park and the historic district there. But while most roads in this area tend to parallel the high, narrow ridges typical of the Washita's, this one cuts right across the terrain, requiring some pretty significant blasting and other engineering work. And that created a geologist's dream, designated an official scenic byway by the Arkansas State Legislature. Our leader was an experienced mapper from the Arkansas Geologic Survey, who all but bubbled with enthusiasm for how the road cuts along this stretch had given state geologists a better view of the geologic sequence here than they'd ever had before, allowing significant refinements to their understanding of regional geology. Here's a geologic map of this area showing how the Highway 5 Scenic Bypass cuts right across the complex folding and faulting present here. For reference, here's part of a cross-section drawn along a northwest to southeast line a few miles to the west, which gives a pretty good idea of just how deformed the bedrock is here. This graphic projects some bedrock formations above the modern land surface to help interpret the broader structures now partially removed by erosion. Notice how the large-scale folding ends up repeating the same bedrock sequence over and over at the surface, and how a series of thrust faults disrupts and offsets that sequence. If you want to explore this further, there's a link to this map in the video text below, but let's move on to look at some highlights on the ground. Here's the Ordovician-aged Womble Shale, one of the oldest formations exposed along this stretch. Normal shale looks like this, nice smooth platy layers. But the Womble Shale has been absolutely shattered by tectonic forces, and here the once parallel layers have been folded back over themselves. Here is a prominent fold within the Devonian-aged Arkansas Nevaculite, a mile or so down the road and at least 40 million years up the time scale from the Womble Shale. This unusually fine-grained form of chert has been altered and hardened by metamorphic pressure during the formation of the Washita's, and is famous worldwide for its quality as a sharpening stone. Like the Womble Shale, the Nevaculite in this road cut has been absolutely shattered and compressed into tight Z-shaped folds. Here, an even larger cut exposes the transition between the Devonian-aged Arkansas Nevaculite and the overlying Mississippian-aged Hot Springs Sandstone, both of which are tilted to the south as part of a large regional fold. Looking closely, you can see a locally deformed sandstone bed within a narrow shale layer. There was some discussion here about whether this fold was tectonic or whether it developed much earlier when these sediments were still soft. But deformation isn't the only story here. There's clear evidence of the original depositional setting for these sedimentary rocks. See these bulbous features? These are flute casts carved from the underlying sediments as water flowed over an ancient surface and filled in by sand. Geologists can use these to determine the original orientation of flow on a sedimentary surface. You're essentially looking up at the underside of a Mississippian-aged channel, in this case flowing toward what's now the southeast. But that's not all. The sheer, blasted face of the Hot Springs Sandstone preserves a whole sequence of channels in cross-section. Other features tell geologic mappers that these channels, 
just a bit higher in the sequence than those southeast flowing flute casts, were flowing in a different direction toward what's now the southwest. Details like this demonstrate how geologists piece together bits of evidence to develop a broader understanding of geologic history. There's just so much to learn from fresh exposures like these. Toward the south end of the scenic bypass, yet another major road gut exposes the base of the Devonian-aged Arkansas Navaculite, where it overlies the Silurian-aged Missouri Mountain Shale, again all tilted to the south. While you can still see traces of the original bedding plains, these rocks all show signs of serious deformation. Here, the shale shows intense ripple-like folding. While here, a thin sandstone bed has been deformed almost beyond recognition, including one place where it's actually folded back in on itself. These exposures are excellent places to contemplate the sheer power of plate tectonics to deform thick sequences of solid rock. Just to the south of that cut is this spectacular sequence, which again exposes the transition between the Arkansas Navaculite and the Hot Springs Sandstone. We last saw this part of the geologic sequence about two and a half miles to the north. If that confuses you, remember that this whole area consists of regional scale folds that repeat parts of the sequence at the surface. So we were able to see the contact between these two units both here and here. Walking down to the south end of this cut shows us a thick sequence of shale above the Hot Springs Sandstone and the Arkansas Navaculite. This is the Stanley Shale, a thick Mississippian-aged formation whose base is marked by the Hot Springs Sandstone, which is technically part of the Stanley. Within the shale exposed here is a textbook example of a small-scale thrust fault. You can clearly see how identifiable beds on either side of the fault have been displaced. Zooming in closer, you can even see how one bed on the right side has been dragged around into a sort of knuckle by frictional forces along the fault. But as cool as this is, it's a pretty minor feature in the grand scheme of things. Let's look at evidence for a much bigger fault. Here we've walked just a bit further south along the road cuts, and are looking back north at that last exposure. What we can see in the distance is the exposure of Stanley Shale that we just talked about, and stratigraphically below it, just hidden around the corner in this view, is the Hot Springs Sandstone and Arkansas Navaculite that we talked about a minute ago. But right in front of us, that much older Arkansas Navaculite reappears, now apparently stratigraphically above the Stanley Shale. What's going on? The best answer here is that a major thrust fault runs through the valley that separates these two exposures. This fault shoved upward on the right or south side, placing the older Navaculite up against the younger shale despite those units being many hundreds of feet apart in the stratigraphic sequence. This is a really simplistic presentation of a more complicated situation, so let's briefly look at the detailed cross-section of this area. This doesn't cover the exact location we're discussing, but it does present examples of how thrust faults in this area work. For example, here a thrust fault elevates the navaculite into contact with the shale at the present surface. And here a different fault achieves a similar effect. Several aspects of the site shown above differ from anything on the cross-section. For example, the orientation of the bedrock layers here is different. The point here is just to show you how large-scale thrust faulting can scramble the apparent bedrock sequence at the surface. This complex folding and faulting is part of the regional compression that occurred during the tectonic collision that initially formed what's now the Washita's, crumpling the bedrock like an auto accident. This new stretch of highway has helped geologists improve their big-picture view of the folding, faulting, and other deformation that accompanied the formation of the Washita Mountains. But this field trip wasn't done. Geologists will drive long distances to see amazing outcrops, like birders chasing a rare species. And our next stop was worth every minute on the road. This is a private quarry that graciously allowed our pack of eager geologists to visit and explore. Getting special access to this was a privilege. The localized folding preserved here, in an Ordovician formation called the Big Fork Chert, is absolutely spectacular. Our leader, that experienced mapper from the Arkansas Geologic Survey, gave me permission to use this clip of him waxing poetic about these exposures. You know, I was just dumbfounded. You know, and they left it. They left it. They mined it, and they left it there for us to look at. Why, how lovely. These features are world class. You could go study classic mountain building areas like the Rockies or the Alps, which I have, 
and these would hold up against anything else. And they're right here in a little quarry in Arkansas. It took immense time and pressure to fault, warp, and fracture these once flat sedimentary rocks into the tortured pattern seen here. And it took even more time to erode all that upturned rock down into today's Washita Mountains. I could look at these new exposures all day and keep finding new things to be fascinated by. And it's thanks to the work of professional geologists like those I shared this field trip with, and generations before them, that we can really understand and appreciate these truly awesome features. If you enjoyed this quick dip into Washita geology, consider taking a deeper dive into our Geology the Ozarks playlist and other content exploring this fascinating region. And please consider supporting our content by liking, commenting, sharing, or even leaving a tip.